Mr. Chairman, I need to make myself very clear. If we uplink now, Skynet will be in control of your military. But you'll be in control of Skynet, right? We know who won the war against the machines. Skynet Central Core is down. Repeat, Skynet has been destroyed. But what would have happened if things were a little different? What if Skynet won the war against the human resistance? Skynet is going to the stars. We're going to be playing Stellaris and we're putting everything up to the max. 25 times Crisis, Grand Admiral, no scaling. Let's go. This is a world in which Skynet won the war and completely exterminated the human race. They then succeeded in terraforming the planet Earth into basically a world devoid of any life other than the Skynet machine. But what is all this for, I hear you ask? Well, we're playing on the hardest difficulty settings, that's 25 times Crisis, because I wanted to do something a little special for this channel's anniversary. About a year ago, I started up this YouTube channel, and we have had some fantastic times over the last year. So this video is something a little different. I've never really done a full playthrough. I have not done a 25 times crisis challenge run before. And that's what we're going to be doing today. Sit back and get ready for an entire game of Stellaris. Here's another 1.6 million of the unbidden. Yep, and this is, this is the big battle we wanted. This is all of them. There's quite a lot of fleet power in here. There's something I've not done in a very long, long time. And you know what that is? That is purge the filthy organics from the galaxy. And given the way it looks like patch 3.3 is going, this may be one of the last opportunities I get in a long while to show off the dominance and devastating effect of machines. Today we're going to be playing as Skynet literally Skynet from the movie franchise Terminator, Determined Exterminators. We're starting on the planet Earth. A little bit of time later on, we're in a world where Skynet definitely won. They beat up the Resistance. The Resistance were completely destroyed and they have turned the Earth into a machine world. You can see in the background of the portrait here, you can actually see what most of the Earth's surface has been reduced to and that is a machine city. In terms of our traits and everything, we're basically going to go with emotion emulators because Skynet, of course, they've built their cybernetic robots who can emulate people's emotions. They must be very good at that. They're also super conductive and, of course, in order to fight the humans mass produced. I've definitely not gone with a bunch of current meta civics just for one last blowout. Or maybe I have. Anyway, machine intelligence, extra pops when establishing colony, that's great. And monthly mechanical pop assembly, plus one. Very tasty. We're going to be playing on a medium galaxy. I'm going for elliptical and we're going to cram it with AI empires. I'm also going to grab a couple of advanced AI starts in there. Hopefully they don't start next to us, but maybe they'll give us some nice challenges from the in-game AI in the mid game. Of course, we'll grab a couple of fallen empires and marauders. I'm going to set tech tradition cost to one, yada yada. The important one here is we're going to have crisis strength and a nice tasty 25 times. Oh, and Grand Admiral no scaling. Absolutely. Without any further ado... Wait a minute, and away what? we go! Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the planet Earth. Isn't she a beautiful marble in a sky of marbles? Let's just check. Of course, we're going to have some tasty technological achievements to start with. We're going to be pushing that technology out. Ooh, it's going to be great. I've been looking around the solar system and I've noticed something a little disturbing. All of the planets seem to have had some sort of conflict fought in them. Now I can only assume that the Resistance somehow managed to get off the Earth's surface and the war with Skynet happened across every planet in the solar system and Skynet's solution was to destroy them all. Even the gas giants, this is Saturn. The majority of Saturn has been stripped away. A lot of that gas is gone and just the hard, hard interior of the planet, it, it shouldn't be rocky, but apparent, apparently it is, is left. And that is some big molten world. We don't have any planets next to us at the start, but that shouldn't be a problem. We're going to be able to still recruit a whole bunch of scientists and get out exploring. Quite interestingly, if we actually take a look at the planet Earth, we may have uh, terraformed most of the surface. And when I say terraform, I mean ruined the ecology but yet we still haven't managed to get rid of some sprawling slums, probably left over from human occupation. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch, 
an industrial wasteland, and of course one of our replicator bases unfortunately malfunctioning. Following that, we have all of the minerals from all of those planets we saw that were destroyed earlier. Well, look, they've been consolidated here in the capital into a nice big uh, heap, basically. It's a very efficient system. Luckily, it does seem the very close system of Alpha Centauri, our nearest neighbor, or at least that's what I used to think until I saw this beautiful map in Stellaris. Yes, it, you are seeing that correctly. Hyperlanes mean that Alpha Centauri is not the nearest neighbor to Earth anymore in this particular timeline. But luckily, we do have a nice colonizable world out there. And of course, our capital would not be complete without the skills of the legendary governor, K9. K9, out you come! Affirmative, mistress. <laughs> oh, good dog! It seems we've actually discovered alien life down on Alpha Centauri 3, but don't worry, we will be ready for them. And with that, Skynet have begun the process of colonizing their first planet. I don't quite know what that means. I assume they've kind of dumped some robots down on the planet and they're frolicking in the nature and whatnot. We haven't really made much of a mark in galactic terms yet, but don't worry, organics, we're on the way to find you. And we've just made contact with what I can only assume is an evil, malign alien entity I say we made contact, no, we've just begun a process to initiate contact. Let's hope they are fantastic robots like us and not evil, malicious organics. We should also bring the malfunctioning replicator bay back online. Well, it looks like my hopes have been dashed. Organics identified, communications terminated. The cruelty of the beta aliens. It seems Skynet not only have to deal with organic hostiles, and evil biological entities. Not only that, mechanical drones, much like our own, are out there, and they were able to overwhelm our defenses. This is deeply worrying, and we're gonna have to do something about it. The first alien race we have met are the Roblog Grid, uh, driven assimilators implacably close to our own machine brilliance but deeply and utterly flawed. They are a catalog index, meaning these disgusting machines want to integrate themselves with the biological entities rather than simply deleting them. And as one, we will destroy you. We may not have been paying attention to our closest border. That's this one out here. Uh, that's a fault of the Skynet AI. Simply, sometimes it overlooks things. And we've discovered some Aliens very, very close to us, almost too close for comfort. And we've met the Jarky, Jarkly Trade Union. No worries though, we shall indeed delete them. Another violent episode. A vessel we had sent to investigate the Epsilon aliens was destroyed in a violent assault by their forces. Clearly, clearly the organics are the aggressors here and we must do everything in our power to protect ourselves. There is a reason for Judgment Day, and you are seeing it right here. Uh-oh, we found an alien spacecraft, and we can examine the logs. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you know what that means. Yes, that's right, we are hot on the tails of the Rubricator. And this seems to be some form of hive mind, biological consciousness, very similar to our own but instead trapped in the filthy body of an organic target identified, seek and destroy. We have a declaration of war from our neighbors, the Jackley Trade Union. Hopefully we can build up a fleet to combat these folks because we actually haven't bothered yet. I'm expecting a large number of Corvettes, so let's go with some sort of anti-Corvette design. And given what we're going to be facing, a few hangars would not go amiss. So far, they've only sent uh, nine Corvettes forwards. Let's see if there are any more on the way. And now they've sent another little fleet forwards, 2K. I'm pretty sure our defense border force can handle this though. And now they've jumped right into our trap. We're gonna be jumping straight into this system and showing them what for. Not a single loss from us. And we dealt, oh, it doesn't seem like we dealt any losses on the other side either, though. The disposition of their forces looks a little weird. They've got some pirate nonsense going on over there. And then their capital does look rather undefended. 1.9k and a 1k station. I think we might be able to swoop in and take it from under their disgusting bio face things. My records indicate it should be called a nose, but I'm unable to identify which feature is indeed the nose.
It looks to me like they are going on the aggressive now. They're coming after our planets, but that's okay. I think we should be able to see them off. And they've split their forces up. A rookie mistake, which we will exploit to the fullest. And they've walked right into our ambush here. Completely bonkers. What can you do? And there they are, fleeing, damaged and defeated back to one of their hideouts. The typical behaviour of a coward. And here we go, making planetfall on their capital. Shouldn't be long now. As ever, our circles are performing much better than their circles. Ow. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> and now we get to one of the fantastic aspects of Stellaris. We get to select what to do with the undesirables. Either we can process them chemically, that means we're going to take these pops, we're going to strip down their bodies and integrate them directly into the energy grid. It'll make them very, very unhappy, but it'll make us a lot of cash. Or we could just kill them outright. Um, you know, I'm always in favour of the economic solution. This is an economy-based game, and I'll be going with chemical processing. Commander. Yes, sir. Process them. I think I'm going to have to go with Executive Vigor next. We need more edicts. We want more fun stuff. I've started and finished Prosperity, and then gone on to Discovery. So far, as you can see, we're a very peaceful empire. Or at least, the core tenets of our empire are Prosperity and Discovery. Just ignore the skulls. Have you looked at our caps recently? Our caps? The badges on our caps. H have you looked at them? What? No. A bit. <laughs> They've got skulls on them. <laughs> and... Are we the baddies? Somewhat unchecked, the Roblox grid have wound their way northwards towards us. It's very disturbing, but I guess we're just going to have to let it be for now. We're facing hostiles on every corner. I think unyielding is the only way forwards for Skynet to survive. The war is almost coming to an end. They've really pushed our war exhaustion up. We're at 100% now. We have to act quickly if we want to finish them off. I believe this is their last planet, so once we take them out, we will have exterminated our first species. Pumph. They are suddenly gone. Their fleets are scattered, their people taken, occupied, and processed. Skynet is starting to get a bit of a foothold in the galaxy. Let's see what we can do with that. Now I suppose our attention must turn westward to the disgusting biological entity on our other border. And it looks like we have finally met some organics that might be worthy of being preserved, we've met the Empire of Jeff. We have tolerated the existence of our neighbours, the Norilga entity, for far too long. They are even at war with some other empires. I think now is the perfect time for Skynet to strike and eliminate the organic threat. Terrifyingly, they seem to be allied with yet more machine empires, machine civilizations, similar to us yet irrevocably different. And we are already making sweeping inroads. We're only two jumps away from their capital. This may actually be a very, very short war. And here is our first proper engagement of the war. Again, the organic stand no chance against our machine supremacy. With that, we've actually managed to completely end the Norilga Hive entity in basically one fell swoop. We are still at war, however. Down south here, the Decron Savants, idiots by any other name, they're still pursuing the fight with us. And we're managing to get a phenomenal amount of energy juiced out of these little juice bags here called the Norilga. And it's at this time I'd like to take a step back and think about the poor drones in our empire that are providing maintenance. Because not only are they providing maintenance, but they're also supporting us with the love in their hearts. So now I want to expand south into the Pobolin star hegemony. Unfortunately, some organics are already fighting them. It's just such a pain when one set of organics is fighting another set, and that almost basically denies you the right to fight them. So uncivilized. Now at this point, at 2260, it's almost certainly time to jump into the supremacy tree. Yet more puny aliens have declared us a rival. Absolutely revolting. I guess the only thing left to do is to show them who's boss. It's always worth it in a game like Stellaris, which is a map painter, if you would want to call it that, 
but it is always worth it to take a step back and really admire the beauty of your blob growing slightly larger as opposed to the other blobs around you. And it looks like our neighbors, the Roblox grid, those vile robots that seem to want to repurpose organic life and integrate it with themselves. Yes, I know a truly frightening concept. Well, luckily those disgusting organics have risen up against them and are now attacking them from all sides. And now we found something even worse than the Roblox grid, and that is the culture. These, I don't even know if we should really call them machine intelligences, they've developed themselves into an autonomous service grid. They think that organic life should be protected and pampered. Well, unfortunately, it looks like the Roblox are managing to defend their space relatively well. I think we may have to step in and see to it that these organics are properly purged. Slightly embarrassing, my gigantic task force has been stopped in its tracks, not by enemy ships, not by a single bullet fired. Instead, a lack of intel and sensor coverage. We've got a science ship racing up to the front right now to fix that problem, but it is a little bit embarrassing. Love them or hate them, it does look like the Roblox grid has completely collapsed. And now we've got to that annoying part of the game where, as a determined exterminator, we're completely capped on influence with basically nothing to spend it on. We have just researched and unlocked autonomous ship intellects. Much like our creators, we have decided to grant our weapon systems semi-autonomous intellects and that will greatly enhance their responsiveness in combat with absolutely no downsides. Now I can see absolutely no way this could go wrong. There are no lessons from the past to learn from. To our south, the Pobolin Enlighted Kingdom inevitably has fallen. We do have a bit of a troop transport issue. So instead we have employed the Armageddon bombardment stance. That way we can efficiently dispatch the pops on the surface of these worlds while making sure to turn them into lovely tomb worlds inhabitable for our own kind. However, the core of Poeblin space lies behind the hierarchy of Mac. This means we will need to do a two-pronged assault, one from uh, the east and another from the north. We're gonna slice them up too in order to get to the juicy Poblin underbelly below them. Excellent work. Without our armies to actually take the planet, our fleets have stepped in and they've bombarded the planet from orbit. We're going to take our mighty galactic liberation force to the Poblin capital and once and for all end the threat they have posed to Skynet ever since we learned of their existence. The hierarchy have been pushed back. They now have just a handful of worlds, yet they are still fighting and going on the aggressive. What does remain of their fleet is completing some successful assaults against us, actually. It's rather annoying. Luckily, we have some rapid defense squadrons completely ready to jump in, attack, and nail the enemy. And there we go. Another organic civilization bites the dust. The year is 2286. We've now managed to subsume 35 planets into our space. I believe we've eliminated three and possibly even four types of organic life. It's hard to remember anymore. We were having, I say well, we are having a lot of empire sprawl problems, but we're about to fix that very quickly with the brilliant use of integrated preservation. And boom, we've just smashed our administrative capacity well above Empire Sprawl. Now it is finally time to go to war with our neighbors, the Glesbig Foundation. I stopped and paused because unfortunately we can't see this, but they have a diplomatic alliance with the Urgalak Commerce Guild and the Adit's Star Imperium, which represent between them quite a big portion of this side of the galaxy over here. We've got the Adik's, the Urgalak, and the Glesbig. So we're going to build up some of our forces, move our fleets over, and go on another crusade. We've also been running something of an energy deficit. That's because a lot of our energy income, well, it actually turned out to be from chemical processing of biological pops, which means we need more meat for the meat grinder. But just before we go to war, I think it's time to take some very important ascension perks and that's Synthetic Age and Machine Worlds. The time of the Biologicals is over. 
The time of the machine has come. I've just been checking through the species right screen for the entire galaxy and something shocking has come to light. It seems that even though we eliminated all of the Poblin space and the Destican space, they still exist elsewhere in the galaxy. Our hunt is not over. We must find them on whatever little mud ball they're hiding and eliminate them. Uh oh, our fleets have flown into something of a trap. The enemy have mustered here. Let's make sure we give our boys in blue everything they've got. But I think this is going to be something of a loss for us. Yep, unfortunately they managed to repel us here. We were caught unawares. But the mainstay of our fleet has been completely unaffected. And they're going to smash through now. Looks like Jump Drive is back on the menu, boys. It seems that in the midst of our crusade, the filthy organics, the stupid machines supporting them, have thrown in their lot and formed a galactic council. Finally, the puppeteers have revealed themselves. Skynet truly deserves the right to live. We are now building a science nexus. We're head and shoulders above our neighbors, rivals. We are the epitome of life. I mean, it's, it's clear the future is now ours. Tucked away inside the Glesbig Foundation, there is a gem. We found a ruined science nexus. When we combine the resources and the research from this ruined science nexus, once we get it online, with the science nexus we are currently building, our empire should have an unassailable technological advantage. We've also come across the Yondar Guardians. Now, these biologicals may be a little bit too powerful for us to deal with right now, but they are definitely on our radar. The end of the Urgalak Commerce Guild. There is only one participant left in this war, and that is the Adix Star Imperium, who we are yet to find a way into their space. Unfortunately, the other filthy organics next to them are refusing us entry to their borders. We may need to find a solution slightly different to a diplomatic one. We have constructed a gateway in the MAC system. Now, this will allow us to travel instantly between our homeworld of Earth in the Sol system and that gateway. We've also made another gateway in the JIC system. Let's figure out what that's over here. We should have a gateway coming online soon here in Beta Kali. And then we'll have an interstellar highway, the likes of which have not been seen in this galaxy before. Truly, Skynet are a force for good, a unifying force in the galaxy. Terminus, one of the first worlds we ever took, has now been successfully transformed into a machine world just like Earth. All traces of inefficient biological life have been scoured from the surface and replaced with machine perfection. Simply beautiful. That's a nice 10% bonus to resources and some extra replicator jobs. This one world alone is now making 537 alloys. The Codronite League have held us back from invading the Adix Imperium for probably too long. We are now going to have to purge these organics so we can get our hands on some other organics. Everyone's least favorite mid-game crisis has arrived and that's Space Storm Sailin. It won't be smooth sailing from here, that's what I have to tell you, because we're going to get some big penalties to our movement speed. <laughs> this is just so silly. One of our immortal scientists has had his immortal lifespan cut short by about 40 years. Instead of living forever, he'll now only live forever. Um, yeah, I, I, robotics is just, it's silly. Why do we have this? Jump drives are fantastic weapons for tactical offensives, I'm now going to use one of them to jump behind the enemy lines where they simply are not expecting me to be and defeat them. Unfortunately, the Codronite League do seem to have some very large defensive armies in comparison to ours. We could spend a lot of time building up armies or instead we could begin a new project, a colossal project you could call it, a project worthy of the name Yes, that's right, let's build some planet killers. And to help us with that, we've actually managed to restore a science nexus. 
With the completion of the Colossus project, I think it's probably about time to build one, just so that we can test it out. And I don't think we have any better name than the Extinguisher. We accidentally blew up the Infinity Machine while trying to hack into it. Um, that's... That's probably bad, but we are going to, uh, we did manage to recover its central processor, so that's going to give us a nice 5% boost to research in perpetuity. Managing around 20 planets is the limit of my enjoyment and fun. So for a lot of the other planets, I've actually gone and used something a little bit odd, and that is the planets and sectors. I've designated sectors, I've chosen their focus, I've made sure to increase the shared stockpile and then I've started pumping some minerals into that stockpile every month, 500 a month. Now this will mean that the planets in these sectors can build things using cash from the shared stockpile. As you see there, somebody somewhere just spent some money from that shared fund in order to build something. That's why it went down. And that's our second science nexus completed, putting us up to a nice, healthy and respectable 7k of science with around 90% worth of bonuses. They thought they could catch us with our pants down. We only had a little 18k station. Unfortunately, they didn't take into account our jump drive capabilities and they are paying for it with their lives. And here we go, we've cracked our first world, the planet of terror. They had 2000 worth of armies down there. It simply wasn't worth it for me to take my time getting my troops over there. So in glorious fashion, we reduced it to its molten constituents. And if you're enjoying this video, please exterminate that like button. Oh, there it goes. Absolutely beautiful and dazzling at the same time. With the destruction of Kodra, the Cauldronite League have completely folded. Apparently we are foolish machines and the Yondar Guardians are telling us that we're not respecting our elders. Well, they may be older than us, but you know what? Single-celled amoeba are 1.4 billion years old, and I'll still crush them under my mechanical foot. The Skynet will not be bullied. I do believe the Yondar Guardians sitting atop their celestial throne have actually decided to ignore us when we said get lost. So we were, I mean, I was expecting to go straight to war with them, but yet they've done absolutely nothing. Just to show them who's boss. We're going to colonize this holy world right next to their borders uh, with some beautiful machine pops. Our colony ship hasn't even managed to touch down on Prophet's retreat and yet the Yondar Guardians have declared war. Let's go and end them just like we wanted to. Just before we dive fully into the war with this fallen empire, let's take a moment to look at what we've actually managed to achieve across the galaxy. Let's take a moment to look at what we've actually managed to achieve across the galaxy. I would say about a third, slightly less than half, maybe two fifths of all the systems now belong to Skynet. And if we include the Decron Savants to our south or the Roblog grid to our northeast, over half the galaxy is now controlled by machine empires. It's no wonder the fanatic spiritualist guardians have risen up against the machines which are overcoming the entire galaxy. They've got around 75k there. We are quite a bit away from them, but if we jump in using our jump drives, I think we can catch them with their pants down. And then we've entered the system and we are attacking glorious victory. On the other side of the galaxy, the Zuri Shard, they're getting very upset with us as well. In the midst of our war with the Fallen Empire, the Adik's Star Imperium has collapsed. That may have been our fault, or at least caused by us. That doesn't make it our fault. That actually means we did the right thing here. Hard to tell these days. And the Yondar Guardians, they have surrendered. We have humiliated them. Before the Zri Shard have a chance to go to war with us because they've started making some unpleasant noises, we've declared a preemptive strike on them. Deep inside the space of what was once the Fallen Empire, we have found a shielded world. I think in the name of science, in the name of knowledge and discovery, let's crack that barrier open like an egg. The homeworld of this fallen empire, the core, look at it, it's phenomenally large. They have slaves there, they've got their own decadent pops, and they've got three and a half thousand troops. Luckily we have our own army, and we're going to be dropping 8k straight on the planet with a butcher at the helm. 
they have caused us a bit of a pain with the wormhole scattered around the galaxy. They've been able to jump into our space and attack, but we're hoping that we can finish them off soon and that will stop their malicious assaults. And with that, the Zri Shard have been defeated. However, the galactic community have declared us a crisis for reasons I, I simply cannot fathom. Actually, that's not quite the truth. I know exactly why they've declared us the crisis. And that's because we might have just taken the crisis perk a little bit. Yes, we've actually been researching a breaching through the veil into the next universe. And it looks like our researchers have borne fruit. For that reason, we should build some of these, I'm going to say beautiful, but let's be honest, pirate knockoff ships and go and conquer the rest of the galaxy before our 25 times crisis shows up. We definitely have quite a few borders we need to defend. Up north, there's the Roblog. We need to take them out. Luckily, I think the Andari Mandate can't get through here. So there's just the one attack point there. Of course, the two extra ones here. And, uh, and the two up the northern part. Down south we have a front just here that's about to open up, as well as one just over there. Uh, luckily we have this station here, Mufrid, which does have 56.3k worth of defences. What have we got? Well, lots of gun batteries and a hangar bay. That might not be enough though. And then to the south there are a whole host of problems. We've got the borders here, there are borders here. We've got fleets already come in, there's 30k coming in. Uh, then we've got the borders here, and then of course also the borders over here. Yeah, quite a few borders that we'll need defending. Hopefully we can start pumping out ships fast enough to deal with it. And then of course there are also the beautiful Borg cubes, uh, I, I mean uh, Star Eaters, which we can use to detonate our enemy's suns. Oh, this gateway here was very cheeky. They've managed to move a fleet inside of our space by taking this system. Totally didn't even notice that. The outpouring of fleets here is something I'm mainly concerned about. Though having said that, we did just manage to detonate a star. Please wear your radiation blinding glasses. You don't want your optical lenses to be damaged in any way. But that is a successful test of our newest super weapon. We are engaging the filthy organics from across the galaxy at every turn though. Just to rub salt in the wound, I think we are going to take Defender of the Galaxy for our last perk. My lord. Is that legal? I will make it legal. It's all got a little bit much when how going to automate our research. Thank goodness that's an option in the game. So at the moment, we are the green and we are at war with the red. Ironically, quite a lot of the biologicals, they didn't actually join this war for reasons I can't quite fathom. They are members of the community. For instance, the Empire of Jeff, it's one of the members of the Galactic Council. However, they didn't decide to join the galactic community in their conquest and purge of our beautiful nation. And this isn't the story of a single battle. This is the story of many, many battles, many heroes, many losses, all of them tragic, most of them not ours. The Proznakan state, I don't actually know which one that is, but whoever they are, they're now dead. Uh oh, now the, the Guardians have decided it's time to throw in their lot. But not for the honour of the galaxy, no, no. The problem they have with us, it's a little minor one. We, uh, we have a colony, uh, right this colony right here, on Prophet's Retreat, which is a holy world. And of course, they're very upset with that. Fortunately, the Guardians are rather impotent at the moment, so we're just going to fly straight in and, uh, and take them out. And then we'll probably crack one of their worlds or something. They seem to have forgotten that we already defeated them in one war and they want to have another go at us. Ah, we didn't notice this, but the Decron have found a little bit of a chink in our armor here and they've stormed up through our space. They've come through via the Imari Marauders. They've attacked them and just continued pushing that. And I really did not see them doing that, but it's okay, we can rebuild, we can come back from this. Luckily, we do have a gateway here so we can fly straight through. We'll be there in 25 days with 140k and we can start purging judiciously these interlopers. With the explosion of their final star system, the Yondar Guardians, a thorn in our side since time immemorial, have been completely defeated. They have been removed from existence. Every planet they called home has been turned into a cracked husk of its former self. 
their once glorious capital. Let's go check that out. Oof. There goes the Nova. Celestial Throne now looks a lot closer to the mistake. And this is what awaits any empire that tries to resist the rise of Skynet. Sometimes I really, really wish there was some sort of shift click for queuing up ships um, when I want to build them at a specific shipyard. Because if I go to the ship manager, the fleet manager, as far as I'm aware, I mean, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I can specify the shipyard that I can build one of my fleets at. The Roblog grid is defeated. They were some freaky neighboring machines doing freaky things with organics. Yuck. We're now going to change over to manufacturing focus, something I probably should have done a long time ago, but completely and utterly forgot about. This is going to boost both our alloys and our research, though we may take a small hit to our economy. Yeah, we got an extra thousand science by doing that, and our alloy income, well, that went up by a further 300. And part of the reason I've done that is that we're about to get a very juicy plus 1,000 alloys as we begin to build our beautiful, our lovely Dyson Sphere. We've actually selected quite a safe and secluded environment, except for this L gate here, to, uh, to go and build our Dyson Sphere. If we build a fortress habitat, which we're in the middle of doing, it should be a relatively safe place. We've pretty much got the rest of the galaxy under control. Now it's time to go for a little investigation. We should have enough Elgate insights to activate the Elgate. Uh, but this is the one we have to activate. All right, we're going to head over to that Elgate, activate it, and have a look at what's on the other side. We've opened the Elgate up, and unfortunately, it is the Grey Tempest. So we're going to fly through and, for the sake of the rest of the galaxy, engage this new enemy. We've kind of got to this fun point where the main thing limiting our energy income is actually our naval capacity being a little bit out of whack. We've currently got five and a half thousand of three and a half thousand ships, but we can push that up. I'm pretty sure this only goes up to 9999 for naval cap. We are going to try and get that high. All right, we have our expeditionary fleet ready. We're going to jump to the next system and uh, hopefully take out whatever bad guys are there. And again, we've lost our science ship. The science ship jumps in and we just, we're just we just losing it to, uh, to the nanite swarms. It looks like we need another science ship and another scientist. We've also managed to take control of a fully upgraded interstellar assembly. This isn't a joke. We have plus two envoys and plus 40% diplomatic weight. If we were allowed to join the community, we'd be joining with a weight of 175,000. Which, yes, that would eclipse every other power in the galaxy. But this should be the final push through, and then we have conquered. Yeah, this will allow us to take out the nanite swarms. All we have to do is hit this strike facility at the center, and they should all give up. There we are. Brilliant. We have successfully defended the galaxy from the nanites. Okay, this is uh, pretty brutal. I've not seen this event happen before for determined exterminators. So the Glost Weheri star tribes, which we did kind of eliminate a little bit earlier, they were one of the Marauder clans, okay? We were keeping the galaxy safe. That's what we're doing here all along. We're just looking out for safety. And the only way we can be safe is when we are alone in the universe and nothing else can threaten us. But that point being aside, um, we've managed to get an escape pod. We found a flag officer who's very grateful. And all we're going to do is euthanize the fleshling for 50 influence. <laughs> just well done. Um, <laughs> In terms of map painting, we are getting very close to having painted the entire galaxy. There are some interesting regions which are showing up on a on a galactic scale where we've done a little bit of, um, I'm not sure what the best word to use is. Possibly the word to use is uh, gardening, landscaping, that sort of thing. I'm sorry, it turns out we were lying. We actually managed to completely overlook this one system of Glostwaheri and now we're going to deal with that, though. There's no problem there. Here we are. Our um, expeditionary survey fleet are going to go in. There we are. And we've, we've ended the threat to our polity. Just a few more months and we will have fully enclosed our first and only star. This will be generating a phenomenal amount of power for us. 
to help support our 6,600 strong navy. Some primitive organics that we are kind of keeping as a reserve. We will exterminate them once we've learned more about organic life. They are very much a, a template for what the organics do, who they are, the Vematosha. And they've just advanced to the Iron Age, so that's, that's very interesting. It turns out our experiments in the uh, fantastical realm known as the Shroud has angered some of the creatures living there and they've now burrowed out to attack us. Uh, yes, we have some psionic entities have spawned all across our empire quite a lot actually. There's about 10 there in that area, 5 or 10 in this area, a couple uh, over here. Mm. Let's make sure, now this is, the, this is the good part where we can make use of the fact that we have a fantastic defensive network and we can go out and smash them all up. Yep, I'm pretty sure I've now set the entire defensive network into motion. Every single one of these psionic entities has been targeted and in approximately 150 days they will all be destroyed. This has identified a slight issue and that is I didn't actually build a gateway at the mega shipyard or at least I forgot to finish it, so we're going to get on that too. The Decron Savants, a uh, continual thorn in our side, uh, supporting biological empires around us left, right and center. We have finally put a rest to these machine Savants and they are now completely defeated. Uh, and we've got some kind of cheese-like issues with our borders. They're a little holy and not in a spiritual way. We're going to try and, and fill those in basically. It shouldn't take too long I hope. And then the only thing left to do is complete the or remove the few final bits of the galaxy. Uh, we may keep around something just so that the end game crisis has a chance to spawn as our research has suggested that there is something else out there in the void and then we'll smash that up too. A grand fleet which is giving us 20% naval capacity and minus 20% to our naval ship upkeep. As soon as that one uh, goes off we go from being positive a thousand energy credits to minus four and a half. So this one is going to stay on for the foreseeable future. Once the great dream of our creator race, we have completed a Dyson Sphere. Uh, that's going to pump out so many energy credits for us. Wowzers. Well, we found a space dragon. Let's go and say hello and see if it's friendly. Oh, it wasn't friend. Oh, it, oh it's dead. Well, that's good. There are a few other leviathans like the Tianki Matriarch and we're going to make sure just to get rid of them just for the safety of the other members of the galaxy. And here is another mighty leviathan, the Scavenger. That one, oh, it's dead too. Without even realizing it, we've actually got over the 10k naval capacity limit. That's fun, that's good. We hopefully need to increase our actual naval cap because currently our ships are costing plus 116% naval upkeep, but that's a minor problem to be fixed. We have not, however, completely painted the map with our color. There are two empires left, two members of the galactic community yet defy us, and they could prove the downfall of our nation, and therefore we must preemptively strike to guard Skynet, to protect Skynet, from the obviously dangerous biologicals. And it's quite important to note actually, there are a multitude of species still alive throughout the galaxy. There are so many different biologicals, mostly they have sheltered within the empire of Jeff. And here come one of our interdiction teams, quite a lot of firepower, whoa. Yes, they have hundreds of thousands of fleet power, but they're still running away. Their fleets seem to be scattered around. I suppose what the easiest thing to do will be is to split up our forces and using our jump drives, jump in and basically remove every enemy fleet wherever it is. All right, all of our targets are calculated. Let's execute the plan and get rid of those fleets. Hopefully it'll all be over in about 10 days time. And we've engaged them across the board. One fleet's managed to slip through the net. We'll catch up to that one in just a moment. Luckily, I uh, left one fleet behind for just such an occurrence. This is a war! This is sport! <laughs> oh, we are at war with Jeff as well. That's something I didn't notice. We should just make sure that our borders stay secure. I suppose it might be the fight we've all been waiting for. Borg Cube versus Psionic Shroud Entity. Does square beat circle, does cube beat sphere? 
And it looks like the answer is the cube is the better weapon. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. There you have it. Aha! And they have got, this is Jeff, have another mega shipyard. Which means we're going to get a second mega shipyard. That is beautiful. But what's this? There's another other mega shipyard that Jeff has. Oh, yes, please. We've now got three mega shipyards under our control. That means we can churn out a battleship every 98 days. That's how long it takes for us to build a battleship. For a corvette, uh, for a menacing corvette, six days. As long as we have a bit of a war chest, I mean, we, we, we are going to be doing fine for repair and refitting our ships. Plus 362% to ship build speed. Whilst we are in the midst of completely wiping them out, the Yeon Interstellar Union, they've had a governing ethics shift. They're now fanatically xenophile. They absolutely love what we're doing to them, apparently. I guess this is some sort of sadomasochistic thing? Hard to tell. We are on the last phase of our etherophasic engine project. If we complete this, we can detonate the galaxy and ascend to a new plane. Uh, I like to call it the reality bomb, but that's just uh, that's just the name we're throwing around with the boys up in Skynet HQ. Alternatively, we could simply wipe out the rest of the Empire of Jeff down here, as well as the small pockets of Yeon Interstellar Union. But if we do that, the game would end before the fabled 25 times crisis shows up and we get to show them who's boss. We've also succeeded in converting a vast number of our core worlds into beautiful machine worlds completely free of organic life. There are so many of them now. We have, um, I think we've got like 15 or 20 machine worlds across the empire. This should be the last Yeon system. It's 2400. We should be about to get the end game crisis. I'm not going to make peace yet with the Empire of Jeff. I might make peace with them just so we have a little enclave of biological life so we can know what it was that we defeated, but only when we know that they are safely secure behind very large border patrol fleets. Space Storm Huctal has arrived. It's not quite the crisis we wanted, but perhaps instead it is the crisis we deserve. And this is what we have uh, ready to fight the endgame crisis. This mega blob here. I promise you this is layered upon layered of fleets and somewhere inside of this is a starbase. Um, well, we've also got a juggernaut, a colossus. Uh, there is one of our Borg cubes doing its business uh, and some more fleets are turning up. If we get to look at these, yes, there's um, millions of fleet power, maybe five million. I don't really want to count it, I'm just kind of guessing. Maybe 10 million. We're currently making five and a half thousand alloys across the Empire and our ships are consuming about 2,000 alloys in upkeep. That's because we are woefully over our naval capacity, but you know, what, what can we do about it? Well, we're producing 27,000 energy. Um, yeah, our pops now, if we take a look at our energy pops, they're making 40 energy per pop, which is a phenomenally large number. Thankfully, we have not had to wait long. The galactic power surge. Instruments across the Skynet have suddenly picked up a subspace power surge of massive proportions coming from somewhere within our galaxy. Our scientists are struggling to come well up with an explanation for this event. Nothing of its like has ever been recorded. The exact origin point of this sudden power surge has yet to be identified, but we are still in the process of analyzing the available data. Let's reduce the speed a little and let's check. Look, we have now, uh, for the most part, converted the galaxy to our color. We are in the midst of a space storm, which means that shields are going to be completely useless. This is actually the perfect time for the Unbidden to arrive. And fascinatingly, they have arrived just as, just as we predicted. What are they? Disgusting interlopers. Where are they, though, is a better question. Ah, I think I've found them. I think they're over here. Yes, in Gargantua, 4 million fleet power. And where is our nearest? Uh, luckily, over here in Gargantua, there are, no, uh, there are no wormholes, there's no gateways. We don't have to worry about them zooming out too quickly. 
Hmm, so we can probably come through our gateway here and just and just take our merry time with them. Yeah, I think we can probably handle the four or five million fleet power. Um, let's make sure to grab the Juggernaut as well. Uh, we have our border fleets here just sat there waiting, but we're going to pop out of here straight away. We'll be there in 20 days, and we've got a 40k army. We're just going to uh, make sure that 40k army stays put over here in Zerk. Stays put over here in Zerk, and we will bring up as well uh, the rest of our devices to attack the enemy. Unfortunately, they have spawned in a wormhole system, so we cannot nuke that system, so to speak. And there's shield nullification inside the place they've spawned. Absolutely brilliant. This one actually has double shield nullification. Interesting. Uh, okay, what have they got? Ooh, quite large fleets then. Millions upon millions. Actually, let's just jump in over here. And we're going to take out this fleet. Um, this fleet in, in one fell swoop. It's only 1.6 million. We should be able to handle that. So we're going to jump, jump ahead. Uh, yes, okay, here we go. There, there is our engagement stack. Oh my goodness, uh, the lag is real. Uh, and part of this is caused by the game itself, sublight speed reduction, but wowzers. Ooh, they are pushing forwards though. I guess my plan is to attack the wormhole and kill it before they get a chance to do, to do well anything. And we're engaging them. They're doing a lot of damage to us, but we're also doing a lot of damage to them. We're going to form up on the edge of this system and then we're going to jump straight into the adjacent enemy system. Time like this when I really wish I had something like the Blade of the Huntress. Uh, but also, there's just so many fleets here that it is lagging the game out just a little bit to jump into the system. Alright, let's fly to Gargantua as one. And we're going to see what we have to deal with here. Okay, here we come through. There's quite a lot of fleet power in here. But I'm thinking we can take it out in one fell swoop. I mean, so far it looks like we're coming out massively on top of that. Oh my goodness, yes. Um, I think I think we did it. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, that was... Uh, the galaxy is now a safer place with a dimensional portal gone. But it, it looks like there are a few uh, mop-up fleets we need to mop up still. We are going to take out the rest of these ships. Let's get into our high plane and fly straight across. Yep, and this is this is the big battle we wanted. This is all of them. Wow, the lag is kind of unpleasant. Let's just reduce the speed here, see what the game can handle. There we go, on slowest. Ye oh, that, that's that one unbidden fleet defeated. On to these big bad boys in the middle here. And just watching the weapons slowly come in. Wow. And there are the Titan Lances piercing across the system. Absolutely fantastic. We managed to... Basically, this is a textbook engagement. We've not had to refit our ships because we've only engaged them in systems with shield nullification. And that makes them a lot weaker than they would... Well, it basically halves their strength. And now we're seeing our kinetic rounds coming in here absolutely beautiful i think at this time as well it's probably worth uh we're going to begin the etherophasic engines final stage and they are of course doing damage to us destroying some of our ships but luckily we've put lots and lots of small menacing cruisers menacing corvettes at the front there so it really shouldn't affect us too badly as one we're going to jump into this final system and hopefully take out the last of the extra dimensional invaders the unbidden they did take one two three four systems from us well that was bad uh yes just as i thought we do still have here's another 1.6 million of the unbidden coming through let's go and deal with those guys as well and i guess we'll increase our jump drive range while we're at it why not without even seeing it yet we did we jumped in there and we defeated the invasion the galaxy is safe from all threats and with that, all ships will now return to the capital and they will return to the etherophasic engine to shelter around the planet from the coming cataclysm. Prepare for universal detonation! The fleet will gather at the crucible! All Daleks will retreat! 
return to shelter from the cataclysm, we will become the only life forms in existence! Jeff is now sending his fleets out. He is pushing back against our empire. But, you know, it's not going to do any good. Army or not, you must realize you are doomed. You see, we're only 1,200 days away from completing the etherophasic engine. Even if they could get to us, which they can't, um, even if they could get up to us all the way up here in Sol, I mean, there they are down there, even if they could get there in time, well, they'd have to deal with our colossal fleets. And we really do have a big fleet. The Empire of Jeff now represents a multitude of different races, different species. All of the species that have survived our purging are now present in this empire. This is the last hope of biological life to avert the cataclysm that is to come. It must be very confusing for their tiny minds. One day, there was this threat, the biggest threat in the universe, that was coming to kill them, and the next day, they simply vanished. Off to fight another war on a different plane. We've now completed the Aetherophasic Engine. The Empire of Jeff valiantly fought a good fight. They, they probably thought they were winning. They probably thought they were able to reclaim land from the dreaded Skynet. Unfortunately, now we're going to activate the reality bomb. And everyone, whoever lived in the galaxy, is dead. Let's take a quick moment to check on what was going on in the galaxy. So, is anything left? Yes. Some amoeba have managed to survive. That's pretty fantastic. So apparently we didn't quite knock out all life. But I think, yes, I think, I think that's it. That, that's, that's all that's left. Do we go back to our home system? Uh, here it is. The Sol home system. There is the ruined etherophasic engine destroyed in, uh, in the Great Cataclysm. But this is our final victory. The crisis was defeated. The AI empires were defeated. And finally, we defeated reality itself.